Suddenly, I heard a really kind voice. Hey, do you need a ride? So I got in the car, and I saw another human being turn into a complete monster. He grabbed me and shoved me into the trunk. He pulled over and got stuck in the sand. I flipped the trunk and I think to myself, just run. In 1992, in the California desert, 19-year-old Jennifer Asmundson suffered an attack from Andrew Erdialis, who would eventually be sentenced to death as a serial killer who took the lives of eight young women. As Benson found the strength to carry on and wrote a book about her ordeal, The Girl in the Treehouse, a memoir, and this week she'll be on the A&E series, I Survived a Serial Killer. Good morning, Jennifer. Hi, good morning. good morning. Thanks for joining us. I can't even imagine going through what you went through. I'm just curious how long it took you to get to this space where you're okay sitting here with us talking about it, A&E, writing a book. Did it take a while to get to that space for you? Uh, yeah, and, and it's ongoing. You know, it's every day, too, that I have struggles that I deal with, but I have always been optimistic and been able to find the beauty in things still and that's you know how i survive daily hmm. when you're writing sometimes things jump into your head that you weren't expecting whether that's a lesson or whether you should have done something differently is something jump out at you or something you learned about yourself during that process uh writing the book i really mostly learned to fall in love with myself and love myself the way that I am and to not judge myself and all my quirky behaviors because they all kind of made sense once I, you know, put, wrote it, turned it all into a book and realized really everything I've been through, things that I had never even told people before. And so that that's the biggest thing I learned from writing the book, but it was very, very hard to write it because, like I said, there were things I've never told anybody, and just going into those places was really hard. Can you talk about, for people that may not know your story, how it all kind of started and how long you were held captive? I mean, we heard briefly how you got away. Just unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I, I was a nurse at the time, a, a nurse assistant. I took care of children overnight. And I had recently just moved out to a new apartment and I didn't figure out the bus schedule and I had been late a couple times to work. And so when someone pulled up and asked if I needed a ride, I had just missed the bus. I, you know, I was young. I didn't think about the consequences and who would ever think that the first person you take a ride with is going to be somebody, a serial killer, you know? So I accepted the ride. He gave me a ride to work. He came back the next morning. He was nice again and wanted to go to breakfast. And I ended up getting in the car with him again because I trusted him. He didn't do anything to me the night before. But then when I got in the car the second time, he was upset about a fake number I gave him. He just tied my hands up. Just uh, I just went into complete shock. He brought me into the desert. I just couldn't imagine what was going to happen to me. It was the scariest thing for me was was seeing people driving past us. Um, when we were in the desert, people driving and going on about their lives and. I couldn't communicate with any of them in knowing what was about to happen to me. I knew he was a killer just by how he was acting. And thank God I got out of there. He put me in the trunk of his car and I prayed. And I just got a burst of energy and I was able to rip that trunk apart and um, take the binds off my hands, rip the trunk apart and break out and, and run. Wow. Now, I know this is, you know, an ongoing process for you just daily life, but when he, I believe he hanged himself in prison, did that, was there any kind of turning point for you, any kind of sense of closure in any way? Yeah, I think there was because, you know, because it all ended. It seemed to me like the, this, this whole 
portion of my life and being this girl who was 19 and who was kidnapped with him and then did interview after interview and then it just seemed like an ending to me it kind of made me feel like i could move on and at first that was a little confusing because this is all i've known for so long you know and i kind of felt like i had i lost my identity but it's a good thing in another sense because i feel like now I could create a new one. I could do whatever I want. You know, I've written the book. It all kind of happened at the same time. So now it's just like I could do whatever I want, put that behind me, talk about it with, with um, not really feeling that emotion that I used to feel. You know, he's just, that's what we wanted was for him to be gone so he could never do this to anybody else. And the way it happened was a bit shocking, but... I mean, hey, he, he's a killer. I guess he killed himself in the end. What do you expect? I don't know. And Jennifer, we should mention that you now advocate for other missing children. You go out there and you do searches. Just amazing work with your personal experience as well. We can't thank you enough for being here with us this morning. Thank you. The book is The Girl in the Treehouse, a memoir, and you can catch I Survived a Serial Killer this Wednesday on A&E. Jennifer, thanks so much. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you.